watching USA, America's all entertainment network. Sure look happy. <laughs> well, I have reason to be. Look what I bought for my husband. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> it's real nice. Uh, real, real nice. Uh, what's in the other box? Oh, there's another negligee, but you can't see that one. Yeah, well, there wasn't much to see of the first one. Well, that's the whole point. Where's Skyler and Jamie? I got presents for everybody. There's been enough gloom around this house. Uh, well, uh, Jamie's out in the study playing, you know, with his airplane. Well, where's Mr. Whitney? I'd love to see that kid zipping around the room. Skyler, where's goes. Mr. Whitney? Yeah, he left about an hour ago. Something you're not telling me. Tell me, where is Mr. Whitney right now? I don't know, Mrs. Whitney. Well, do you know when he'll be back? I don't know that either. Do you know anything? All right. I, I, I guess you should know. He, he, he was in the study talking with Jamie about an hour ago, and then all of a sudden he rushes out of the room, knocks the hinges off the door, and... What? He goes up to his bedroom, starts packing his suitcase, and he looked like... I, I, like I have never seen him look like that before. And then? And he, uh... <clears throat> left. You know, Betsy, I have to hand it to you. The same place, same food, and business has doubled since you took over. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. We have got ourselves a great location. Friendly service, attractive prices, attractive weight. You were saying? Well, I was just, you know, saying that I don't, um, really think I could have done any this without you, Russ. I mean, I, I'd like to hire some more help. Oh, no, I don't mind, Mitzi. I like the college town atmosphere. Besides, the hours are flexible and the boss is real nice. Yeah, not so bad yourself. Oh? Huh? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll sign that oh, yeah, when you're ready. Oh, yeah, for the Ixon distributor? Yeah, it's already. Just Thanks. sign it right there. Sure. Well, hi, guys. Hey, I, I hope you guys aren't really hungry or anything because this place is not quite ready to open yet. Yeah. Not oh, him again. Listen, if you want, I'll go over there and I'll ask no, him to no, leave. No, no, Russ, it's, it's okay. It's just... I just don't like that guy barging in here whenever he feels like it. It's okay. Look, I know you think that dude is an ace, right? But I had him pegged from the first minute I saw him. I just can't believe Jack Boyd would send those two guys Well, to believe it, you. baby. You saw what happened. You heard what they said. They said they were friends of his. I know, but... No buts, okay? It's between me and the big man on campus. Let me tell you something about your friend Boyd. He's gonna learn a lesson the hard way. Preacher Emerson don't back down from nobody. Listen to me. Jack Boyd is not the type of man to do something like this. It's just not his way. You seem to know a lot about his ways, don't you? You're not being fair. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, we've talked a little. How little? Just enough to know that despite what you think, Jack wouldn't be so low. If he wanted to fight, he'd come himself. Besides, it doesn't make any sense. Jack has no reason to want to fight you. Yeah, right. Preacher, don't start that again. Look, don't get me wrong, okay? I trust you. But when those two dudes came after me, there is no way that I can trust Boyd. Okay, can I get you guys something to eat? Now, wait, I want to warn you, the oven is not hot yet, but I've torn up enough lettuce for a nice salad. Well, I could tear up some cabbage, squash some tomatoes. Maybe later, Mitzi. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Oh, Mitzi, I'd just like to apologize for the both of us. Jody, I said I don't need you apologizing me anymore. Preacher, come on, it's okay. No, it's not okay. Nothing is okay. Right. But it's gonna be. 
Say, I got some news for Jack Boyd and his fraternity brothers. They wanted me off campus. They went about it the wrong way. No, it's happened to me twice. Dizziness, um, disorientation, everything blurring for just, you know, a few seconds. Well, I don't know, Dr. Robeson. Why don't you tell me? I thought I was cured. 2020, you told me. Residual effects of a concussion. What? How long is that supposed to last? I wish you would have told me this at the clinic. That's all. I... Okay, yeah, I know. I didn't have the symptoms when I was there. But I do now, and I need your help. Yes, I'm back on the force. And that's why I'm really concerned about this. I mean, what happens if my eyesight fails me at a crucial moment? People's lives depend on me, doctor, including my own. You sure that's all it is? All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely call you if the blurred vision returns. Right. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Calvin, what happened? Nothing. Why? Why? You look like you're about ready to burst. Well, I'm just having a little trouble. How are things at the pawn shop? Too quiet. Nothing? I mean, I, I haven't heard a thing from Green Tree or Wallace since the night Detective Gallagher. Chris, I don't know. I'm just beginning to think that we have blown it. Oh, come on. Blown it how? I don't know. But like it or not, I think that Green Tree and Wallace have been scared off. Okay, Jamie, come on. Now, sit down. I'm gonna ask you some questions. Gunther, you can leave us alone. Uh, now, Mrs. Whitney, uh, you're not gonna do anything parental, are you? I mean, he's a good kid. He didn't do anything wrong. Gunther, thank you for your loyalty to my son, but I think this is just between the two of us. Could you leave us alone? Yeah, all right. I'll be upstairs in my room. If you need me, I'll be staring at the ceiling. All right, Jamie, you look really scared, but there's no reason for you to be scared because I'm not angry, okay? I just want to ask you a few questions, all right? What did you and Skylar talk about when you were in the study before? I didn't mean to make you mad. I know you didn't mean to, and I don't blame you. But I just need to know what you two were talking about in the study. Substance adventures. Uh-huh. Anything else? The movies. Okay. Now, this is very important. What movies? The ones we all went to. Oh, Jamie. You didn't tell Scholar that we went to the movies with your dad, did you? That's when he went away. I have put 150% of myself into this case, and I have no intention of watching it just go up in smoke now. You've got to be patient. Patient? How can you sit there and talk about patience? The officer who was sitting at this desk is dead, Chris. Calvin, I am aware of that. I am wearing his shoes, remember? You're back up while you're undercover, remember? Now, I know Gallagher's been murdered. I'm sorry. But we're not going to find his killers by, by running around like... Running around like what? Like what, huh? Come on, oh, say Calvin, it. Calvin, you know what I'm talking about. Now, we're not after a couple of street punks here. We're after, we're after trained professionals. Every bit as smart as we are, if not smarter. I mean, they must be if they're keeping one step ahead of us. I like this. get it. So, as far as you're concerned, they've just got us licked. Is that it? No, I'm I mean, maybe we should just turn in our badges and let the kales of the world just run through Monticello and pick it clean. Is that what you want? Then we can call up Mrs. Gallagher and tell her that her husband was killed for no reason at Kellen, all. Helen, you know me better than that. Jeez, what is this? What's the matter with you? Is there something more than Gallagher's death going on here? Look, the man was a good cop, all right? But more than that, he was a good human being. I mean, husband, father, coaching Little League in his spare time, the whole bit, Chris. And then, then this guy comes along, somebody with a gun who doesn't even know him, and he's gone. Just like that, he's gone. Okay. Now, we got this killer, see, and he's sitting out there, and he's he's laughing his head off and feeling good and patting himself on the back about what a good job he's done, but not for long, Chris. I swear to you, not for long. I know he's a family man, and I liked him, too. But we've got to be patient, because we can't do this any other way. There are ways, and there are ways. You believe me when I tell you I'm going to find one. Has there been any message from Lindy Bundy? 
You expecting any? Yes, I was expecting one. I mean, she said she... Something must have happened over there by right now. Easy, you take it easy. Look, I'm not gonna rest until I nail these creeps to the wall. You know, I haven't been away all that long, right? But something's changed. I mean, Kelvin's changed. Ever since they started the task force. Why is he so restless? The death of a fellow officer does that sometimes. No, no, it's more than that. And it's more than the pressure of working undercover. It's something else. Preacher, don't do anything crazy. Think it through first. Cool down. So I'm going to embarrass you again or something? That isn't what I meant. I'm sure we can come up with an explanation why Jack Boyd's fraternity brothers were trying to push you around. Yeah, maybe they were practicing for a wrestling scholarship or something. Preacher. No, I don't need no explanations. I'm sick of explanations. You see, if people didn't do what they did in the first place, there'd be no need for an explanation. Now I'm going back to Monaco. Not like this, Preacher, please. I didn't say I wasn't coming back. Because believe me, I am. Real soon and mean. And you can tell that to Jack Boyd. You can tell it to his jock friends. You can tell it to the dean of the school. You can tell it to anybody that's going to listen. Okay, campers. Yes, we had to kick it in the rear a couple of times. But the oven is hot. And uh, how about some nice pizzas for you, too? Now, I'm pushing the anchovies. But if you guys want the meatballs. There's enough meatballs in this town already, all right? Would you like a single slice? Geraldine Raven, have you seen Skylar? Has he called over there? No, I've called Whitney International. I've called the Monticello Men's Club. No one has seen him. No, nothing's wrong. I just want to talk to my husband. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. Yes, Geraldine, look, I'm really sorry about the other night. It's just that I, I couldn't sleep and I needed to talk to somebody. I, I apologize. If you happen to see Skylar or he calls, please let me know, okay? Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Yes, uh, perhaps you can help me. I, I don't want to disturb Mr. Swift, but I was wondering if, if uh, Mr. Schuyler Whitney had an appointment with Mr. Swift this afternoon. He didn't? Okay. Uh, no, no message. All right, thank you. Very nice dress, Doctor. Why, thank you, Myrna. I thought I might work on my image a bit. There seems to be this unwritten law that psychiatrists are not allowed to look like human beings. Well, that might be fine and well for Sigmund Freud, but not for Beth Carell in 1984. <laughs> Chris! Oh, Chris, it's so good to see you again. Oh, how good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell you how excited I was to hear about your news, and Miles was so oh, thrilled. I'd like to talk to you if you've got a moment. Well, of course. Um, I've got some work in the other room. Yes. Oh, settling back into your routine? Beth, I need your advice. It's about Kelvin. I'm worried about him. Worried? Why? Well, I don't know. I'm a cop, not a psychiatrist, so I can't quite put my finger on it. But there's something about him that's... You think he's changed? Yes. He seems full of this nervous energy. He's very insistent, very impatient. He can't even stand in the same spot for more than a few seconds at a time. I mean, this is not the Calvin Stoner I've worked with five months ago. Yes, I know what you're talking about. I've noticed the change also. In fact, Calvin himself has noticed it. Yes. Yes. He asked Miles for a prescription to help calm him down. Oh. Did Miles give it to him? No, of course not. He refused, and rightly so. Neither of us believe in regulating a person's day with chemical highs and lows. There are more constructive ways of doing that. Do you know what's wrong with him? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if anything's wrong with him besides the tension and the pressure. Hopefully, Calvin will be fine once this undercover assignment is over. I guess you're right. I suppose I'm 
just overreacting. Well, anyway, I, I should get back. Thank you for your advice. Beth, I've managed to make up a list of them. Chris, hey, hey. welcome back. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so good to be back. <laughs> really is a lot better than it used to be. Well, thanks. You know, it's a lot easier to make a pizza now that I don't have a boss riding me all the time. Yeah, I'm sure. Listen, uh, I don't like to get involved in other people's affairs or anything, but uh, you and Preacher have a fight. Why? Is that going to upset your cooking skills, too? No, no. It's just, well, it's just that you're friends with Mitzi, and Mitzi's worried about you. And I, I don't like to see her worry. Thank you, Russ, but I really don't want to talk about it. Well, I understand. I mean, Everybody's all uptight now. This killer is running around the campus and everything. I don't want to talk about that either, Russ. If you don't mind, I'd really like to finish my lunch in peace. Yeah, sure. Sorry to bother you. Well, I meant well. Oh, Russ, I know, but you really shouldn't talk to her about the murders. Why not? Because she knew one of the victims, Maxine Britton. Oh. Russ, you know that. You were asking me about Jody and Preacher and Maxine the night of Shelley's party, remember? I'm sorry, Mitch. Yeah, I think you must be mistaken. Matthew must be very happy. Oh, I love that kid so much. You know, he lost his tooth up at the farm, and he told my mom that uh, he'd give up his reward if the tooth fairy would bring back my sight. Can you believe that? He's a fine young man. Yeah. I'm gonna go see how Myrna's doing in the back. Oh, no, Beth, please, stay. Um, I'm, I gotta go. So, um, thanks for the advice. And I hope you take care. You too. Bye. Good to see her again. Yeah, sure is. You two on any better terms now? Well, she's very polite and very civil, but that's about it. Not that I expect anymore, considering all that's gone on between us. Well, uh, give it time. You're both such good people. I'm sure that uh, she's going to get to like you just as much as I have. Um, we were discussing Calvin. Oh, really? Mm. She's noticed it, too? Mm, she came to me for advice. Beth, you and I are going to have to keep a very careful eye on Detective Stoner. Has Mr. Whitney showed up yet? No. Maybe we should uh, call and check up at the hospital. No. Mr. Whitney wanted to be here. He would be here. Yeah, Mrs. Whitney, I, uh... I, uh... I know this is none of my business, but... Well, I just want to tell you how sorry I am about what's happened here. And, if, look, if there's anything I can do to help patch things up, you just let me know, okay? Thank you, Gunther. Sure. Um, listen, you want anything to eat? Uh, I made your favorite uh, Flemish stew. Nice white sauce, made especially just for you. I'm not really hungry. Why don't you give it to Jane? Well, uh, where are you going? To bed. Hey, okay, I agree. You're fit enough to start working on your radio show again. Thank you, sir. Only this time, hmm? take a little doctorly advice. The ratings are supposed to be higher than your blood pressure, oh. not the other way around. <laughs> okay, I will try and work on the proper balance. Oh, then. Myrna. Hi. I gotta get to the hospital. Now, you take it easy, will you? Mm -hmm. Myrna, I'm counting on you to ride shotgun on her. I've never yet seen a doctor who listens to another one. <sighs> so on. Bye-bye. about a friend of mine, this woman I know. She's in love with someone, but she's afraid to let him know. And what's she afraid of? How far she could take the relationship before... before her lie caught up with her. Lie? Oh, don't ask. I mean, she swore me to secrecy. 
Just the two of us, no. No. Now, Jerry Rhodes talks a good game, but I don't think he's any closer to the truth than he ever was. Now, I'll keep an eye on him just the same. Now, the two college kids I talked to you about, no, I don't think they've got anything solid either. Her name is Jody, Jody Travis. Him? Yeah, well, he thinks he's a tough customer, so uh, I better be careful of him. No, I'm not giving up on them. No, I think that they just had a fight. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we appreciate it very much. Okay, bye-bye. Fella just called to say that he had a great dinner here last night. Oh, yeah? Well, that makes at least three favorable mentions. Three? Yeah, yeah, those uh, girls over there, they said they loved the pizza. Hey, we're on our way. Thank you.